So hi everyone and welcome to this uh, video on dynamic programming using the Brock and Merman form. Okay, so uh, consider, okay, consider we have the utility function uct is equal to log ct and uh, we have our production uh, scale function, our normalized production function, which is kt of uh, theta. And let's assume for this example that the rate of depreciation delta is equal to one, okay? So this is a specific example of the sort of general growth model that we've been discussing in the past. Okay, so step one, okay? We first form the Bellman equation. So we have the equation, okay? So we start um, start with um, the law of motion. And we isolated this particular form before as CT is equal to F KT plus one minus delta KT minus KT plus one. But under Brock Merman, delta is equal to one, but delta is equal to one. So this reduces to CT is equal to F KT plus, sorry, minus KT plus one, right? So it reduces to that simple form. And then we were given with a form for F KT. So, but F KT is equal to KT theta. So we get CT is equal to kt theta minus kt plus one, okay? Then we plug this, this in and build the bell. Okay, so our bellman is v kt, our value function, which is equal to max, we're maximizing with respect to kt plus one as before. And the utility function is in log form. So that's log ct. ct takes this form here. So that's kt theta minus kt plus one plus the, the discounted continuation value kt plus one. Okay. That is what we have so far. Next, step two derive the first order conditions. So in this, we only have one. So we take the derivative with respect to kt plus one, and we get um, one over kt theta minus kt plus one, because it's a log derivative of a log is one over the function inside times the derivative of the function in, uh, inside with respect to the variable in question, which is kt plus one. So that's times negative one plus, okay, you have beta expected value. Okay, we're gonna derive it with respect to kt plus one, kt plus one, right? And we equate equal to zero, right? Hence, okay, if I simplify this, hence, Okay, this will this term here will be negative, so transpose it to the other side. I get one over kt theta minus kt plus one is equal to beta expected value v kt plus one kt plus one. Right? So that's our F O N C. Okay. So step three is to derive, derive the envelope equation, okay? So we have to derive the envelope equation. So recall that the derivative V kt plus one, kt plus one is unknown to us. So to get this, we first derive the value function 
with respect to, instead of kt plus one, kt, and bring it up one period forward, right? So we do that, that's partial v kt with respect to kt. So if we have here our value function, so we're gonna have one over kt theta minus kt plus one, right? Times derivative of the function with respect to kt, that's theta kt theta minus one, right? So we have theta kt theta minus one over kt theta minus kt plus one, right? Then, Having computed this, having computed this, we bring this up one third forward. This, we bring this up one period forward. So this is uh, sort of defined as V kt, kt plus one, uh, kt. Right, what we need is V K T plus one, uh, K T plus one. Okay? And that's just gonna be equal to theta, K T plus one, theta minus one. Theta is not a function of time, so we don't add a plus one to it. K T plus one, theta minus K T plus two, right? From here, we plug, this into the FONC, right? So we derive this as our FONC. We call this equation here, uh, that particular equation that we just derived, we're gonna plug it in here. So we get that. Then basically this equation, this form here, we plug this in here, right? So we get, okay. 1 over kt theta minus kt plus 1 is equal to beta times the expected value of theta kt plus 1 theta minus 1 over kt plus 1 theta minus kt plus 2, right? And we refer to this as our Euler equation. equation. Then, okay, uh, this tells us that the marginal utility, utility of an additional unit of consumption is equal to the discounted value of an additional unit of capital. capital. Okay, so that's what the Euler equation tells us. So step four, uh, steady state, okay? At the steady state, state, okay. set kt is equal to kt plus one, is equal to kt plus two, is equal to k star, right? So uh, all the kts there will just be k star because again, capital per worker does not change at the steady state. So we have one over k star theta minus k star, no, sorry, this is star, equal to beta, expected value, okay, um, theta, k star, theta minus one, for k star, theta minus k star. Notice we can drop the expected value because assuming that we know k star, that's known. Okay, so we get, um, then 
what I'll do is I can move this here. So I'm going to get um, k star theta minus k star over k star theta minus k star is equal to beta times theta k star theta minus 1. Okay, clearly this cancels. I get 1 uh, is equal to beta theta k star theta minus 1. Then I divide both sides by beta theta, beta theta. So I get k star theta minus 1 is equal to 1 over beta theta. Then I raise both sides to 1 over theta minus 1 to cancel out the theta minus 1 there to solve for k star. And I get k star is equal to 1 over beta theta raised to 1 over theta minus 1 which I can further simplify as beta theta raised to one over one minus theta. So I get K star is equal to beta theta one over one minus theta. Okay. That is the steady state level of capital. Okay. And uh, this in particular ends our discussion on the example of Brock and Merman 1972 on dynamic programming. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.